Hello and welcome. This is Betty Franks Krauss with Betty Krauss Art. And today I want to walk you through the steps that I took to create this commission. It is on canvas and it is 36 by 48 inches by 1.5 inches, actually probably just slightly less than one and a half inch sides. So I like to start all my pieces out with mark making. This is just my way of loosening up and relaxing. I use a variety of different pencils and crayons to make marks uh, throughout my piece. There is a link below this video that will take you to my favorite art supplies and you'll find the mark making tools that I like to use. This one here that I'm using is a graphite crayon and I like to dip it directly into the water and then put it on my canvas and you know you can do it dry or you can dip it either way or you can dip a brush like you're doing here like I was doing there and um, make make the marks a bit more bold by using a little bit of water on it. Just a fun way to loosen up and, and relax and get the process started. So once I've got the mark making down, I always like to start with some black. And in this particular case, I didn't go with solid black. I decided to mix in a little bit. I think I mixed in some blue with it. Um, not 100% sure, but sometimes I like to adjust that color just slightly by adding other colors to the black. And then that uh, spray bottle was just simply water in it uh, just to make some some runs throughout it or drips and then I took a skewer or maybe that was a nail sometimes I like to use a nail to start making some marks right into the wet paint that starts to create some texture for me so the brush I was using for the black, I didn't wash it out. I kept it as it is and just wiped it down a little bit and then dipped that brush into white. Now for my white, I really like to use gesso. And I like gesso for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of the primary reasons is because I use a lot of white and gesso is just so much more affordable. The other primary reason is because I like to have my paint kind of dry in a matte finish and the gesso allows it to dry matte and that allows me to make marks on top of the paint. I found that with some paints, uh, not the Nova, I'm currently I'm, I'm using Nova color paints which is N-O-V-A, um, but there are some other paints out there that as you know acrylics are plasticky but some of the acrylic paints really dry plasticky and shiny uh, to the point where I can't make any marks on top of it so I've found that if I use enough gesso that um, it kind of flattens it out it makes it more matte like so that I can do some marks on top of that so on this first layer here I'm adding some color I like to work with either cool colors or warm colors as I go. So I'm starting off with my cool colors. And the reason I like to do that is because if you mix your warm colors and your cool colors, you end up getting mud. And so my way of avoiding mud when I don't want it is to just work with either the cools or the warm. So I started off with the cool colors. And I've also got, that was a spatula I was using to, again, make some texture into that wet paint. So my cool colors are kind of my blue greens and some blues there. And I also like to use yellow. And here I'm using a scraper to just kind of spread out some of that paint. Now brushes that I like to use, I use a variety of different brushes throughout my process. I like the long handle ones when I'm wor working large like this. And this one's probably, I'm gonna guess, it might be like a size 10, uh, possibly a 12. And I'm not sure if this one is a round or a flat. Um, I use one or the other. Here I turn the brush over again to make some lines right into that wet paint to create texture. 
So I've sped up this video because it's a fairly long one and I didn't want to go too far over an hour. I think this particular one is at about an hour and four minutes or so. Um, so I sped it up a little bit more than I normally do. Now, if you want to slow it down at the bottom of your video that you're looking at, and it should be, I think at the bottom, bottom right, there's some options. And I think you can choose an option to slow down the video if you want to watch me creating this a bit slower. But if you do that, just keep in mind that my talking is going to slow down as well. So that's going to sound pretty funny. But what you can do is turn on the captions and you can read what I'm saying instead of hearing me and then you can turn off the volume. So those are some adjustments that you can make if you want to slow this down. So here I'm just finishing up this first layer. I'm probably going to let that dry. And yep, I am back with um, another day um, and I can tell because I've changed. <laughs> I'm wearing something different so I know it's, it must be the next day or a few days later. So I'm starting off with mark making again because this layer is completely dry. It's again my way of just loosening up, getting into the motion of creating. So I'm using a variety of different pencils. I like to use Prismacolor pencils for my colored pencils. I also like to use China markers and uh, sometimes I'll use charcoal in there as well. I like to use Neocolor 2 crayons and also the Neocolor 1. The difference between Neocolor 1 and Neocolor 2 is uh, Neocolor 1 is water is, let's see, is not water soluble. So, uh, which means that it pretty much stays in place once I start putting something wet on top of it. And the Neocolor 2 is water soluble. And that means that if I put something over it, it tends to move a little bit, you know, dilutes the lines a bit. And I tend to like that a lot more. So I tend to use the Neocolor 2 more often than not. So here I'm getting ready with some warm colors. So I'm putting out some reds, oranges, yellow again. Yellow works for both the cool colors and the warm colors. And putting in some colors. Now at this point, this is a commission as I mentioned. And at this point, I'm not thinking too much about the end result. This is still the beginning stages where I'm putting down color, putting down some layers of color, and I am not worried about what that final piece is going to look like just yet. You'll notice right to my right taped up are a couple of printouts that I did of pieces that the client liked. So I'm kind of using that as an inspiration, although I'm not going to be copying them in any way whatsoever. The customer is asking for some really bright colors for the final piece. And as I go through this and I work my way to the end, you'll see later on the, the brighter colors that I'll be using. She gave me a list of colors that she really likes. And those are the ones that uh, I make sure that I'm definitely using at the very end. This is often the really fun stage for me, the not so stressful part of it where I get to just make all kinds of marks and add color and not worry about it too much. Although at the same time, my brain is already thinking about composition without me actually, you know, um, without actually truly thinking about it, it's kind of more in my subconscious that, that I'm starting to think about making certain marks uh, in certain places that I will be probably using on the end piece. So I'd like to say that I'm an intuitive painter, but I'm really a practiced intuitive painter. And what I mean by that is, although I don't know what the outcome is going to look like, I've been doing this long enough that I know my process and I know my steps that I take and how I get from a blank canvas or a canvas with a few marks on it to that final piece. I know the 
process that I take, but what colors I'll use and what marks I'll be using and where I'll be placing those marks is always new and exciting and different. And I think that's what I really love about creating art in this particular way, in this particular style, is that I, I have no idea what I'm going to be creating. And that's part of the excitement about it. And sometimes when you're creating a commission, I have to say it could be a little bit of a stressful point as well because I want to create something that the client absolutely loves and is happy and and proud to be hanging in their home. So a lot of thought goes into the pieces that I create every step of the way. So here you can see I'm doing a lot of mark making with the warm colors. We can see some of the cooler colors coming through from that first layer. Now most of the colors I like to mix, but this one, this is a red that I'm taking directly out of the jar. And the reason for that is because I don't like red really mixed with white or or really any other colors. Um, on occasion, I might mix it with maybe a quinacridone magenta or something like that to, to deepen it a bit more. Uh, but typically, I, I like the red directly out of the jar. And then all the other colors, I really like to mix as I go. So I mentioned earlier, these are Nova Color Paints. Nova Color is a Southern California company. They make all their paints here in California and they ship throughout the US and Canada. Unfortunately, they don't ship overseas. So if you are in California, or I should say in the United States or Canada, you, you can order directly from them. I've got a link to their website in my show notes. Now they don't have an influencer program, but I do appreciate it if you could mention that you heard about them through me. And that just lets them know who's um, sending customers over their way. So I am back again. Uh, it's a different day, or maybe it's later in that day. I think I'm wearing the same, um, same shirt. But um, I have to say that I keep several shirts here in my studio that I change into when I get to the studio. So I may have just thrown on the same shirt. I only wear it for a couple hours, so I tend to wear it a few times before it goes into the wash. The other thing you might notice is there's a, an additional piece of paper taped up to the wall underneath those other two. And that's the contract that I have with the client that lists the colors that she wants. So at this point, I'm going to start thinking more about the colors that she would like to see since I got through my first couple of layers. So I'm back to going with the cool colors. And again, mixing as I go, I've got a blue green. You can see just to the very far right of the screen is the blue green. And then I have the phalo turquoise next to that, those tall jars that you see, those are the pint size jars. And then the yellow is the quart size that they offer. And then they also make available four ounce jars, which are really great for travel size. So at this point, I am starting to fill in more. So less mark making and filling in more and deciding what do I want to keep from those previous layers. I like painting the sides of my pieces, especially when they're deep like this, or even if they're not, even if they're just the half inch, I still like to paint the sides. I like that. I like it when the colors wrap around the edges and the painting just continues. So 
So in this upper right hand corner, you can kind of tell that I was saving some of those red pieces. I'm kind of working my way around bits and pieces that I want to have showing through. It's been a few weeks since I created this piece, so I'm trying to remember the colors that the client wanted. She was looking mostly for uh, teal, uh, turquoise, corals, uh, some of those really uh, beautiful jewel tone colors. Now the reason this particular video I had to speed up because it was a bit longer than my usual ones is because I was really feeling challenged with the colors and making sure that I was getting them right for, for the client. So it had ended up being a bit longer than I had anticipated. Also I included at the very end uh, varnishing the piece and also uh, putting the wire hangers on the back. So I've got, um, I've got that on video as well at the very end. In the beginning, I tend to put down a lot of black. However, as you can see here, I've already covered up quite a bit of it. And the reason for that is I really like the black peeking through just here and there, I, I feel like it gives it gives the piece a lot more depth, especially when you start seeing it a little bit closer. You can really see the, those little um, parts where there's black showing through. At the very end, I show you some close-up pictures and um, it gives you a chance to, to get a better look. I, I know from this distance, it's much harder to see some of the details of this piece. So I'm switching back and forth between filling in and continuing mark making. Sometimes what happens is when I start filling in, I feel like I've, all, I've taken away too much of the mark making. So I, I bring that back in after I've done some filling in. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. And wanted to let you know that I'm inspired by Fields of Flowers. So all of my paintings are a reflection of how I feel about fields of flowers, not necessarily the way that they look. So it's kind of my abstracted way of, of how they make me feel. So there you can see I'm, I was filling in with a bit of white and then I come back with that same white and do some mark making with it. I, I used my, my bottle there with water in it to just um, remove some of that smaller circle. I guess I was feeling like it needed to be a bit larger. Oftentimes, if there's some colors that I've put down that I don't like, I'll often get my spray bottle out and just spray it down. Or the other option is to just let it dry completely and then paint over it. And that's one thing I, I love about acrylics is that I can just wait a while and paint over any areas that I'm not happy with. And I tend to do that a lot throughout my process, not necessarily because I'm not happy about that color, but maybe it's just not working with what I had put down next to it. Or maybe it's not working because I put down some colors on a different area of the painting and it's just not working well with the latest color that I put down. So it can be for a variety of reasons. At this point, I'm starting to think a bit more about the composition and how is everything playing together in terms of 
Do I have some larger elements? Do I have some smaller elements? Is there some interest in the colors that I've selected in addition to the areas that I filled in and the colors that I used for that? So for example, the color I just put down is not the color that shows up at the very end. So I covered up some areas, but it you'll see later that's a color that I, I just wasn't happy with. It wasn't working with the rest of the painting. So it's a lot of going back and forth, push and pull, putting down some marks, filling in some areas, stepping back, seeing how is that looking, how is that working out, how does that feel, is it is it all coordinating or not necessarily coordinating, but is it working together, is it is it harmonizing together. So I often will step back when I get to this stage and start looking at it, kind of the bigger picture and seeing where, where is my eye being drawn in, what areas need addressing. Right there, I just covered up some that were kind of a coral color that was clashing with the other coral colors. So I covered those in white. I might come back in with yet another color later. So once I put down some marks like like the ones that I just now did also. I had one color down, but then I came in with another color. And oftentimes I'll let some of that previous color still peek through around the edges. And that again, gives it some more depth and interest. client was also looking for a fuchsia or a periwinkle. I've got a little bit of periwinkle in there. Later on, I add a bit more of the fuchsia color, which is a color I had to mix because that's not one that I had in a jar. So I had to mix a few colors together to get a good fuchsia color. On that portion there, I'm trying to cover cover up some of the yellow that's popping through. Yellow is not on her list of colors. I think I ended up leaving just a little bit. Again, I, I like, I love all color. And so when I'm creating, it's really all about starting off with a bunch of colors, but then scaling that back and deciding what stays and what goes. But even when that happens, sometimes I'll leave a little bit peeking through. So here, a lot of that black has now vanished. But um, if you look at it up close, you can really see the depth within that area. Oh, except for when I come in with an even heavier white, <laughs> like I'm doing here. So when I use white, it's not pure white. Um, there's just a touch of color added to that so that it's so, so that it's working with the other colors that I've got going. So it's harmonizing as opposed to just the pure white out of the gesso bottle. Now the gesso bottle that you see on my table there, that's actually a Liquitex gesso bottle, but I poured into it the Nova Color gesso. I like using that um, that size bottle to squirt out the gesso. So I've, I've saved my Liquitex bottles. I use Liquitex for years. I love their Liquitex uh, gesso. Also use their varnishes. 
but uh, the gesso with no uh, nova color gesso i absolutely love too it's honestly between the two i could barely tell the difference So one of the reasons that I love using Nova is because not only their colors are absolutely gorgeous, uh, the pigmentation is wonderful, but also the price. The price is just um, amazing because you get quite a bit uh, for, for the type of quality paint that you're receiving. So what I love about that is, as you could tell, I tend to put out a lot of paint on my palette and... I don't like to worry about my paint and, and feel like I'm wasting my paint. So when I'm using Nova Color paints, because they are very affordable, the last thing I think about is my paint being precious and I have to be so careful with it. If I have to start thinking that way, I think it's going to hamper my ability to create freely and to just put down color, you know, as I, as I see fit. Um, I know when I used to use more expensive brands, I would only put out a tiny bit on my palette because I was just so afraid of using it and wasting it. But with Nova, I, I just don't worry about that at all. I put out whatever I feel that I, I need to uh, use and, and I just don't think about it. And that really frees me up from, from uh, frees me up to be able to just continue creating and do what I love to do. All right, so here we are back another day. I like to run my hand over the canvas and kind of take off any dried paint that's a little bit too thick um, in areas, little uh, nubs, nibs, I don't even know what to call it, but little, little pieces of paint that have dried up. So it seems like we're on the home stretch, but not quite there yet. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on it now and and then come back to it some more. So here I'm starting to add some brighter colors, some more of the colors that the client was asking for. And I'm looking at the size of these marks and shapes. So I've enlarged those ones down there because I felt they were too small. And you'll see in a little bit I'm going to be adding some more larger shapes. As I mentioned earlier, I like to balance it out with some larger shapes and smaller shapes, uh, different sizes as well, uh, different shape sizes too. We've got some that are kind of elongated a bit, some that are circles, uh, some that are open circles, empty circles, filled in circles. So I'm using my sprayer again to just soften up some of those areas and then I use paper to lift that up and just kind of spread it around in different places and now I'm actually wiping some away because I felt like those were just a bit too much too bold they weren't quite working so I wanted to push them back a bit and I do love drips so those larger ones on the left down there I just added a bunch of water to get some drips going. So here I'm trying to create more of a periwinkle color and I think I was able to do that. Again, that's a color that's not in a jar, so I had to mix colors to, to get there.
think I've got a rigger in my hand right now. A rigger is kind of like a script brush. It's got very long bristles on it and makes for great lines and circles and um, the thinner lines and shapes. So I really like using that. And that works best when you put it in water and have it fairly wet so that it can really move around. Val uses another element that I'm looking at as I near the end. So here you can see that I'm really trying to lighten up this one area up here so that I've got lighter values there. And then you'll see later I'm going to come in with some darker values. So one way that I try to make my values you know, from one end of the scale to the other is I'll look at, well, what, what areas do I already have that are light that I can make even lighter? And then I'll be looking at what areas are dark already that I can make even darker. And when I say dark, it doesn't have to be a black color. It can be those marks that I have in the lower left, that uh, fuchsia color. Those are going to show up on a gray scale as being pretty dark. So here I'm coming in with, um, this isn't actually black, it looks like black, but um, I've actually mixed in, um, I think I, I added kind of an amber color to it. I'm trying to make it more brownish. This painting is going to go up on a stone fireplace, and I was trying to bring in some of those browns from the, the stone fireplace. Now looking at them, they really stand out, but you'll see as I continue through this process, those get covered up quite a bit and then just a little bit ends up showing through. I'm trying to add some neutrals in here. And I like to add neutrals to a lot of my paintings because it really makes those brighter colors pop even more. So I've got kind of a, a taupey brown that I've created to bring in some neutrals. And this one's more of a, I think this is yellow okra that I'm using. mixed in with whatever I had on my brush, which was that darker brown color. I don't clean out my brush very often. I like to go from one color to the next, again, trying to stay with either the warm colors or the cool colors so that I'm not creating mud unless it's intentional like I was doing here. But what happens is when I don't clean my brush, then a little bit of that color goes into the next color I'm creating, and that tends to create harmony between the colors. At this stage, I remember being a bit frustrated because it wasn't quite going the direction I wanted it to. Again, not knowing exactly where I wanted it to go, but I just knew that it really wasn't coming together yet. And there was going to be some more work that I needed, needed to do to it. And this is where I tend to stand back and observe and, and see where I want to go next.
So I think that top corner's got maybe four or five layers at this point. And here I was just taking whatever was on my brush and offloading it, making some marks throughout the piece. I like doing that. It just, I think it adds some interest when you've got some interesting lines coming through. You could probably tell that I've got my AirPods in my ears and I really like listening to podcasts when I'm creating. And the reason I love to listen to podcasts more so than music is because podcasts allow me to pay attention to what the words are being said, what the conversation is. And that frees up my brain, my right side of the brain to stay creative and not to be judgmental about what I'm doing and what colors I'm putting down or what marks I'm making. Doesn't work every time, but it shuts down that, that side of my brain that's being so um, judgmental a lot more so than when I'm just listen to, listening to music. So that white is completely gone up there. I think I end up bringing some of that back. I'm trying to focus more on bringing in the teal colors that the client would like and also the bright fuchsia colors. I've got gesso in that jar that's from Nova Color that I'm trying to use up. I had that sitting around for a bit and wanted to use it up before it completely dried out. All right, well, there goes the yellow. So again, that's a perfect example of trying a color, seeing if it's going to work with the rest of the piece and it didn't, so went back over it again. So one other reason I like to spray down an area that I put down paint is to allow some of those 
layers underneath to show through just a little bit. So here I've come back and I think I forgot to turn on the camera immediately. So I did put down just a few marks before I remembered that the camera wasn't rolling. My paper is flying because it's a bit warmer than it was when I started. So I've got my fan blowing back behind me. I see I don't have AirPods in my ears, so I might be just listening to music today. I've got an iPad back behind all those paints with a speaker, and that's where I tend to listen to my music. And I don't think that's me dancing, that's me thinking. I do the tapping of the foot while I kind of rock back and forth sometimes, thinking about what I should do next. Again, kind of offloading my brush, making some marks. Clearly didn't care for that part, so sprayed it and wiped it down. I remember at this stage I was a little frustrated because it wasn't quite coming together and I was just trying to figure out why I couldn't pull this together the way I felt it needed to be. But the only way to solve the problem is to just move forward with continuing with my mark making, continuing with adding colors. I am off screen there, looking at the piece. Sometimes I'll stare at my back wall and then turn around and see where my eye goes first and figure out what area I need to tackle next.
those darker marks that I made earlier I've softened out in most places already. All right, so it's going back up on the wall. I had taken it down because I was working on another piece and had it hanging in another part of the studio. So I'm coming in with mark making now. And I do remember this. I just um, almost felt like I needed to start all over because I really felt like I wasn't getting this piece to where I wanted it to be. So. I thought, well, what the heck, I'm just going to put down a whole bunch of marks and just see where I go from here. Oftentimes when I'm coming really close to the end, I don't come in like this and just make marks all over the place. My mark making at the very end tends to be very intentional, but this was definitely not intentional. This was just put down a whole bunch of marks wherever. All right, so I decided that the marks that I had on there were just too small. I felt like they they needed to be a bit larger and especially in proportion to the overall size of the painting. Yes, you can create a painting, you know, with all small marks, absolutely. But for me, I felt like that was really the issue that I was having was that I had too many marks that were too similar in size. So I needed to come in with something a bit more bolder and bigger. And that's what I did here with this orange. Now it doesn't end up being orange at the end. It ends up changing a bit, but but it was what it needed to, to move it forward. So there I added some pink marks, again, a bit larger than some of the other ones. Coming back in with more of that periwinkle. On occasion, I'm, I'm looking at that sheet of paper, again, reminding me of the colors that the client would like to see. So the orange was definitely really bold and not one of the colors that the client wanted. And I knew that. I just needed to put down something and I knew that I would be covering it. And, and honestly, I think I go over the colors on those particular marks probably 
several more times before I call them done. Covering up a little bit more of the neutral colors that I had up there. Now I can't recall if I had sent the client a picture at this stage or before. Uh, now I don't remember. Um, I do send a few pictures when I get towards the end just to get some input and feedback of um, whether I'm on the right track in terms of colors. And I know that the client didn't really care for the neutral colors that I had added in there. So at the very end, only a little bit of those neutrals end, end up showing. So I think it's coming together a bit more now. Although those larger circles that I added, the color right now is competing with the, the colors that are down below that. Uh, and somewhat similar in size, not exactly, but I think they're competing a bit. So I end up changing out those colors a couple of times. I also decided that I felt like those bold circles that I added were a bit too large. I was reading I was reading through some emails that the client and I went back and forth on and there were some comments in there and I felt like making them that large was not exactly what she was looking for so I decided to scale them back a bit. So that meant coming up with colors that were similar to the ones that were underneath so that it wasn't obvious that I made them a bit smaller. And that's where when you're mixing your own colors as you go and you're harmonizing colors, it's hard to recreate that exact color. So um, I've recreated colors that are very close to what I had before. Right now in my hand, I've got an eraser because remember at the beginning of this particular day, I came in with a whole bunch of marks feeling a bit frustrated and thinking I was going to paint over the majority of it. But in fact, I was able to 
really bring it closer to home. So I erased a lot of those marks because I don't like those showing too much at the very end. As I mentioned, I like to do intentional mark making at the end as opposed to just uh, randomly uh, putting lines down everywhere. So I just took down a previous painting I was working on and this one's coming back up. So another day gone by. Canvas is thoroughly dried, just knocking off some of the dried paint and jumping right in. So at this point I did email it to the client and what I do is I get a picture of where this piece is intended to go and then I superimpose this piece into the room so that the client can really get a feel for how it would look in their room. And so the feedback came that came back was to lighten those particular those larger elements that I added in she wanted those a little bit lighter she felt those were a bit too bold for her so I've come in here and I'm trying to lighten them up I actually end up lightening them up even more once the once that particular layer dries there we go maybe I didn't wait for it to dry have I mentioned I'm not a very patient painter in terms of waiting for paint to dry? <laughs> I tend to just come in and just add more. All right, so that was a short little segment there and I let that dry. I think I worked on something else and now I've come back in to lighten it even more. I think what I was doing on my phone is I was trying to look up the comments that were made about that piece. Yeah, that's what I'm doing on the phone there, making sure that I'm addressing everything. All right, so I addressed him and then I sent it to the client uh, for her approval and she approved it. So this is the final piece. And so what you see me doing here although I'm pretty fast, so it doesn't look like it's intentional, but I am doing intentional mark making here. So I'm looking at different areas where I can add a little bit more interest. Usually the mark making doesn't drastically change the end result. If anything, I'd like to think that it enhances the piece just a little bit. And really these are things that you're only going to see up close and not uh, from across the room. It, it's so when I create artwork, I, I like to create artwork that is that draws the person in from a distance and so that when they get in closer, they get even more interesting things to look at. And that's what I feel like the final mark making does. So when I do the earlier mark making, I tend to hold my pencils pretty loosely. But here you can tell I'm holding it more like a pencil, like I'm writing something. And again, that's because I'm trying to be more intentional. Now what I love about all the mark making that I, tools that I use, the, the Neo Color 2s, the um, Prismacolor pencils, even the China markers. If there's something I don't like, I can come in and erase it like I showed earlier where I was erasing some of those marks. And I love that because it really gives me the freedom to just go in and, and make a bunch of marks and not worry about, you know, being tentative about whether or not I should make that mark. These are Neo Color 2s that I've got in my hand here. So I'm adding some of that. And I like with the Neo Color 2s, I can also blend them a little bit with my finger and make them look more painterly as opposed to, um, you know, um, hard edge marks.
All right, so at this point I'm signing because I'm going to call it done. Don't you just love the way I drop that? <laughs> All right, so I signed it. And I'm erasing it because I signed it kind of crooked and that was really bothering me. So I took it all the way off the wall. You can't really see me down there, but um, I signed it a second time and it was straighter this time. So I do like to sign in pencil for that reason is sometimes I, I do not do a good job of making things perfectly straight. So I like that I can erase. All right, so here we've got some close-ups. And hopefully the videos slow down a bit on this portion so that you can see up close the mark making that I did. And all the layers you can see, the marks one on top of the other. There's some pencil markings there I'm trying to get up real close for you. Around those purple areas, you can see some pencil markings. So I like my paintings to be a bit raw and um, not completely looking perfect. So I really love the way this one turned out in terms of areas that were really left quite raw, allowing some of those previous colors to really show through. And the mark making from previous layers showing through. Here's a quick tour of my studio, a few pieces that um, are now finished, but they were kind of in the final stages. And there's my table where I do all of my palette work. I've got some pieces on paper down on the floor. Those are getting unrolled and you can see my um, the smoke from my incense burning. I like to burn incense when I'm in the studio. So all those pieces on the back wall are now completely done as of this recording. Excited about that. That piece there, that large one, is kind of a different one for me. I was um, I created something for my sister. And there's a piece down below that I was working on earlier. All right, so now I'm going to show you. I use workable fixative, and I already sprayed it. So I sprayed it the day before. I usually tend to spray as I'm leaving the studio so that it can dry overnight and I don't have to smell the fumes. So this is satin Liquitex varnish. I chose to do a, um, a satin finish uh, because I didn't want it to be too shiny. Um, the gloss tends to be pretty shiny and I like to use the gloss on my smaller pieces because they're small and the colors really pop a lot more. Uh, but sometimes even on the larger pieces, depending on the piece. Sometimes it calls for a gloss, sometimes a satin, and sometimes a matte. All right, so I put two layers of varnish down. Um, I only showed you one layer. And then here I am. I just measured real quick, pencil marked it, and I am putting down the D-ring hooks. And then I've got my wire. I like using the plastic coated wire. So add that. I like to stretch it out a bit and then wrap that around so that it's nice and neat and clean on the back side. And there we go. And that is the final piece. So I've got some close-up pictures for you as well after I show you this one. I go into some close-ups. And there's a side view where you can see I paint around the edges. I want to thank you so much for sticking it out and watching this video all the way through. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that you liked what you saw and that I should be creating more of them. I love getting comments, questions. I'm always happy to answer your questions. So feel free to leave me comments and questions down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you again. And I hope that you have a wonderful and creative day.